Some things in life are a necessary evil, like stretching or a taper, and of course, the occasional treadmill run. As a serious runner, I believe that running on a treadmill is a last resort. Like, something you do when it's only absolutely necessary. There are a lot of problems with running on a treadmill. I'm somebody who's obsessed with data because I believe that questionable data will somehow give me an edge in my running performance. But the metrics that I get from a treadmill are highly suspect, even for me. How do I know that the treadmill is even calibrated correctly? For some reason, running on a treadmill is always way harder than running outside. If I'm running outside and doing 730 miles, I'm barely breaking a sweat. On a treadmill, well, I won't admit that I'm breaking a sweat at 730 pace, but my heart rate always seems to be higher on a treadmill, so I'll just ignore that data. I will often feel intimidated by the guy on the treadmill next to me. I'll look over and try to see what speed he has his treadmill set to, and then I'll set mine to be a little bit faster. I can't have him showing me up in the gym. When I'm doing speed work on the treadmill and really crank up the speed, the entire treadmill shakes and my footsteps are really loud. I can feel everybody's eyes on me and they might be wondering what the racket is about, but they're probably just really impressed by how fast I can run. After all, they're probably used to seeing hobby joggers in the gym. I might complain about it being too hot in the gym. Sure, the treadmill might have a fan, but it's still stuffy and sweaty, and if the people lifting weights are cold, well, maybe they should put on a shirt. You know, wearing some sleeves won't get in the way of them pumping iron. And besides, I have real work to do. Because I pay attention to things like science, I know that running on a treadmill means a lack of wind resistance. To compensate for this, I'll set the treadmill to a 1% incline, even though I really, really hate inclines. And what's with these treadmills that go up to like a 40% incline? Who's running hills that steep? If it's steeper than Heartbreak Hill, then it's not worth running. And that's only worth running because it's part of Boston. If anything, I need a treadmill that does a 40% decline so that I can practice for one of those revel races where you can easily set a PR or BQ and then hope that nobody notices that it was a rebel race. I mean, those races have such an obscene amount of downhill, they shouldn't even be allowed. On the other hand, if I was still trying the BQ, I would be all about the rebel races to make up for my lack of talent. For reasons that science cannot yet explain, running on a treadmill is always boring. No matter how much I try to distract myself, by watching something on my phone. But when I'm traveling or the weather is bad or it's late at night, I'll subject myself to this torture instead of taking a rest day because, well, there's no days off. If I have my watch going, it will likely say that I ran a nine minute mile, even though the treadmill was set to a seven minute mile. Obviously, I can't upload to Strava from my watch. When this happens, what I'll do is, after the workout, I'll take a photo of the treadmill's workout summary screen. When I add a manual activity to Strava, I'll be sure to upload this photo so that there's no question about the amount of miles that I ran or the pace that I ran the map. Of course, when titling my Strava activity, I'll use the required terms like the hamster wheel, or the mill, or the dreadmill. Running on a treadmill is a sacrifice, but when it's said and done, I'll be glad that I got the miles in. And yeah, I'll complain about it on Strava, but it's all part of the grind. <laughs>